Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review The Ring. So The Ring is directed by Gore Verbinski. It is written by Aaron Kruger. It stars Naomi Watts and Justin Long. The film is about this woman who watches this very creepy videotape. And once you watch that videotape, you could die seven days later. And because of Naomi Watts' character watching that videotape, she could die in a week. So it's up to her to save not only herself, but to investigate the other people who have have faced the same horrible situation. So before I review this movie you guys, my guest star Real Chase Lee is going to be reviewing this movie. So Chase, take it away. Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, I'm Chase Lee from the Real Chase Lee YouTube channel and uh, welcome to the horrific month that 22 Tiger Dude will have on his channel. Uh, boo, did I scare you? Uh, that should have scared you. No? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. So anyways, I'm here uh, back again. Uh, thank you, Tony, for inviting me to do this again. And I'm going to do uh, The Ring with Tony. Um, that sounded really sexual. We're going to review The Ring together. And uh, there's a lot to talk about this movie. So let's uh, let's start with a little backstory. All right, so The Ring, uh, the American version, is based on a Japanese movie called Ring You. And this was a part of the, like, the J-horror um that started being remade over here overseas because we had the ring we had the grudge uh then they did like uh, what was that the one missed call the eye i mean there was a lot of j horror that was being uh remade and you know rightfully so the ring was one of the first ones to pop it off and be super successful along with the grudge uh i do not like the grudge uh american version i actually like the grudge version in japan juan more than the grudge version in america that is the exact opposite for the ring. I think Ring Gyu in Japan is fine. It's frightening. It's a little creepy. It just kind of gets under your skin. But this one, the American version, I think is 10 times better. So the ring, it came out in 2003 and it was directed by Gore Verbinski, which is the most appropriate name for this type of movie. Uh, but he's the director of the first three parts of the Caribbean movies. And it's actually written by Aaron Kruger, who wrote Transformers 3. Uh, but don't, don't worry, don't, don't let me scare you with that. Um, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. The Ring 2. Also written by Aaron Kruger. So you're just like, okay. So it should be at least decent, right? It's directed by Hideo Nakea, Nak Nakeda? Nakeheta? This is what, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looks like when a white person tries to pronounce a Japanese name. Um, anyways, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, who the hell is that? That's the guy that directed the original Ringyu. Oh, confused? Let me get this straight. Ringyu, made in Japan, really successful, made by the guy that directed The Ring 2. The Ring was remade. It was excellent, and I think better than the original Ringyu. And it's directed by Gore Verbinski. The original director of the Ring U comes back to direct Ring 2 in America, and it sucks balls. Why do I own this? I think I got it for free <laughs> while uh, I was buying movies one time, so go, go back to your cage. All right, she, 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 she's escaping this DVD cover because she knows how bad of a movie she's in. She's, she's escaping it. No, 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 you, you must stay in there. Learn right, from your mistakes. So... We're here to talk about the ring. So in 2003, this comes out, and I was 13 at the time, so you know I was at that ripe age to you know go see PG-13 horror movies on a Friday night because I didn't have anything else better to do. As you guys know, I was just such a womanizer. I did so much in high school. I was terrified. I, I remember when I went home and I, I had I had legit nightmares of the little well girl running throughout the hallways of my house and. Uh, like, here's a specific nightmare. Like, I woke up in my bed one time, and I opened my front door to my, my bedroom at my parents' house. And the way it's designed is, like, when I open up my door, there's a little hallway, and you take a right, and the hallway shoots down all the way to my parents' room. Now, I went down the short hallway, and I turned right, and I saw this little figure at the end of the hallway. So you're thinking to yourself, oh, fuck no, I'm, I'm out. I'm waking up. No, no, I was stuck in this uh, nightmare. It was terrible. terrible. So I saw the little girl... And she turned around like really fast and she starts sprinting towards me. So I ran back into my room and I closed the door 
and I remember there was a lot of banging and stuff, and then it stopped. And then I found a flashlight randomly because that's how nightmares work. I found a flashlight and I started like, uh, you know, shakily like moving it around my room. And then the well girl was in the corner of my room, and then she sprinted towards me, and then that's when I woke up, and I was like, cool, thanks, Ring. Um, true story, by the way. There's only three horror films uh, I've ever seen to where they've actually given me nightmares. That would be The Ring, American version, uh, 13 Ghosts, and Paranormal Activity. You're thinking to yourself, why 13 Ghosts? I don't know why, but every time when Matthew Lillard is in that fucking basement, and everything is like chasing after him, I had a dream one time where I was stuck in the ba that basement and all the doors opened up at once and th they started all coming at me at once and it was terrible. I think I like wet my bed. <laughs> it was that bad. You know, when this when this came out, I didn't know it was uh, remade on a Japanese uh, movie. I, I thought it was just an, another you know crappy, a little American horror film. And I remember walking out of that going, that was really terrifying for a PG-13 movie. And I really enjoyed the hell out of it. There's not really many bad things to say about this movie. Let's start with the directing and the writing. The writing is actually really good for a horror film. As much of a, a cheesy idea as it is for someone to watch a videotape and uh, they watch the whole thing and they get a phone call, you're going to die in seven days, the little well girl comes and stares at them and you die. That's a pretty weird little storyline, rightfully so, it came from Japan. That writing was elevated because of the direction. Now, Gore Verbinski, I think this is his best movie he's ever directed. Um, if you like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, that's fine. I'm just saying I like this one. The way Gore handles this movie is that he takes this crazy idea, he takes this silly concept, and he elevates it to the nth degree by having really gorgeous and kind of under your skin cinematography in terms of like the color and just the way it was shot. It looked like a creepy kind of folk tale that someone would tell around a, uh, a campfire. Interesting sound effects and uh, editing techniques, especially when you see the actual video and stuff. Uh, they're just normal images of like maggots and ladders and horses and stuff, but the way it's put together, Gore really wanted you to sit there, take it, and have it seep under your skin and just really kind of like, ugh, just, ugh, just get, get that off me, it's like a leech. Um, so just the way he handles this movie, he elevates this material to a higher ground to where it is a lot more terrifying than it actually is. And that has to go with the, the way the movie is handled and the way the movie is shot. So good job, Gore. Congratulations, you gave me nightmares. The acting, uh, listen, I've always liked Naomi Watts. I, I think she's actually really good in this one. She's missing from The Ring 2, of course, because, I mean, you know, if I was pitched that script and I was Naomi Watts, I'd be like, oh, fuck no. I'm going away. So yeah, Naomi Watts is really good. I, I, I've always really liked her. She's always one of those actresses that whatever she's in, regardless if you like the movie or not, she's really good. Like, and then, you know, she's been nominated several times and stuff, and she's just always just one of those kind of hidden actresses that most of the population don't know, but like if you uh, show a picture of her, like people would know who she is. She's that type of actress. And uh, she, she really, I think she delivers a uh, believable performance of someone that is petrified of uh, you know dying with her son and stuff because um, her son watches the videotape before she does, and you know the son she has to protect her son and stuff. So I, I felt that connection between her and her son, and this is what sucks about this movie. This is the only thing I'll say it sucks. When you watch Scary Movie Three because they spoof the ring, they spoof signs and all that stuff, it ruins the movie for you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like when you watch Scary Movie Three and then you uh, watch uh, the ring again. Um, it just completely ruins the the creep factor because uh, <laughs> in Scary Movie 3, they completely demolish The Ring with so much great comedy. By the way, Scary Movie 3 was the last good one. If you watch The Ring first, it actually is pretty, uh, you know, horrific and stuff. And like I said, the, the relationship between the mother and the son, I really bought it. I thought she completely sold that thing. And uh, all the other supporting cast is fine. There's no, there's really no uh, complaints. I really like the little girl. She's creepy as all hell, especially with all that makeup on. Especially towards the end, when you see that eye, you're just like, uh, uh, it's it's fantastic. Why would you put yourself through that? I don't know. Cinematography, like I said, is so crisp and beautiful. And it's just really haunting in some of the shots. I remember, oh man, what was the one shot? There's like one shot where it's like a house or a tree. I forgot. And it's like uh, on top of a hill, and it's like a, a far away wide shot and stuff. I just, there's shots like that throughout the entire movie, and you're thinking to yourself, 
wow, they actually gave a crap about the way this movie is shot. And it's not just this crappy shaky cam. They utilize shadows properly in this. They 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 utilize makeup really, really well in this movie. So everything doesn't uh, look fake or anything. It actually looks authentic and realistic. So I, I totally appreciate the way this movie is shot. It's actually, you can actually argue that it's, I'm not saying Oscar worthy, but it's the type of cinematography that will make you kind of scratch your head and go, why aren't more horror movies like this? Because isn't creepy imagery supposed to go along with the story and the characters and stuff to kind of elevate that scare factor? Because that's what you want to do, right? It's a horror film. You want to terrify your audience. But anyways, oh shit, I didn't realize it was almost two hours. Well, guess what? It doesn't feel like that. Maybe towards the middle of it, you might get a little bored, and I'm just going to be completely honest with you if you've never seen this movie before, um, but the very beginning is is gripping, it's intense, and the very end is uh, very suspenseful, and it's got that um, just intensity you would want towards the finale of this crazy movie. But I would say the middle, it, you know, for people that are watching this for the first time, it is a little slow because not even Watts has to figure out what's going on and stuff, so there's not m many scares, but... The creepiness is still looming throughout the movie with the atmosphere and the tone throughout it, but the middle is, you know, it's a lot more talky talky and a lot less scary scary. It's not a big deal, especially for me. I, I, I really didn't care. And I realized that uh, the sun is coming out. <laughs> it looks like uh, the ring girl is coming after me, like she's going to burst that little, uh, little bright hole right there. I would say the ring is a very good one. If you want to honestly ask me, what are some of the best horror movies uh, during my 25 years of life on this earth? And I'm not talking about old horror films because guess what? We all love like Halloween and The Thing and The Fly and stuff. We love iconic horror films like that. But if you want to talk specifically, uh, what, what am I, Generation X? No, I'm not. Well, oh, shit, I'm not Generation Sorry, I'm not. Um, am I the Millennials? I forgot what generation I am, but my generation... I have really enjoyed The Ring, Paranormal Activity, the Insidious franchise. So, I mean, there are certain horror films that really uh, kind of spoke to me and made me want to write horror films and really make horror films. The Ring is one of them. It's a good one, guys. I'd probably give it a B plus. Um, I think it's a pretty solid horror film. I'm not going to put it in the ranks of, like, you know, the best horror films of all time, but in terms of, like, like I said, my 25 years of life on this earth, it's a damn good one. I think you should check it out. So B plus for me. Have you guys seen The Ring or have you even heard of it? I'm sure you've heard of it. Have you even seen the, the Japanese version, Ring You? Comment in the place right below, uh, below my face in this video and let me and Tony know. So uh, back to you, uh, t t Tony, t Tony Tiger Dude, the Tiger Dude. I'm, you know, I I'm a little jealous because, you know, he he's got he's got Tiger in his name and it's really, you know, kind of intimidating and stuff and... I just I feel out of place because people have compared me to such animals as a, like a platypus and a sloth and a seahorse and Bruce Campbell and so I'm just not really you know animal material so I don't know why Tony invited me because you know he's a tiger and stuff so but anyways I appreciate it, Tony so thank you um, I'm Chase Lee and that was the ring and the ring girl's gonna pop out right right there that that sun is terrifying I, I don't know why it just automatically got bright. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much, Chase, for reviewing The Ring. Now, The Ring is a movie that really knows how to build its own atmosphere. Gore Verbinski actually directs this movie, and I thought he did a terrific job because what Gore Verbinski does so successfully when making a movie like The Ring is just building the overall world and just creating the tension and giving us the psychological elements that can make a horror movie like The Ring just so interesting. And I gotta say, for this being nearly two hours long, I was honestly never bored watching this movie. I thought the movie, for being nearly two hours long, actually flew at a very nice pace. Everyone gives really good performances. Naomi Watts gives Honestly, one of the best performances of her career, she had a very intriguing character. Of course, I have to compliment the cinematography for The Ring because the cinematography is so beautiful looking. The cinematography just wants to give it this gloomy feeling and 
it's a beautiful kind of gloomy feeling because of just how the movie is lit. It's actually quite unique cinematography wise for a horror movie and I have to give the movie so much praise for that. And then I don't want to give away any spoilers here but there is a certain character that Naomi Watts visits at the mental hospital and all I'm going to say is that that actress really pulled off that role so well. It was just a very disturbing performance. To be honest, I have always considered The Ring to be more of a psychological thriller, psychological mystery thriller for that matter, rather than the horror movie, even though yes, you do have your horror elements to it. And to Aaron Kruger's credit, he did such a great job just writing this movie. This movie is just so clever in its writing, and it's brilliant with its direction and the cinematography and how it builds its own world. That's what makes it so impressive. And the performances are brilliant too because these performances that you see in the movie, they want to try to make you feel for the characters because these characters do feel like real, genuine human beings. Like just real normal people going through very horrible situations. And how the ring handles that, I give a lot of credit to. Now with all that being said, I don't think the ring is as scary as it thinks it is. It is creepy. When the film gets really scary, it really does come to like the videotape scenes. But videotape scenes aside, I don't think the movie is as scary as it thinks it is. It's definitely creepy, but I wouldn't say The Ring overall is a scary movie. And honestly, that's fine with me because this movie was more about building the atmosphere. It got me under my skin for sure, but I would have liked to get just a little more terrified when it comes to the movie. There are just a few moments in my opinion that do come off more as cheesy rather than scary. There's also a few things in the movie I did find predictable too. Like there's a few times where I would call something and that certain element did happen. And then I do think there were a couple of times in the movie where it kind of focused on giving you a random jump scare rather than being all subtle and it just didn't really work in my opinion. Overall though guys, The Ring is a solid psychological thriller horror movie or as I would like to personally call it a psychological mystery thriller film with horror elements to it. So I'm going to give The Ring 3 out of 4 stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of The Ring? And I would also love to thank my guest star, Real Chase Lee, for coming here to review The Ring. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, I highly recommend it. He does more reviews, he does podcasts. So if you guys want to check him out, I will leave a link in the description below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.